What is the point of the book of 2 John? Today on The Midweek Move, we're going to talk about that. Hello and welcome to the Midweek Move, podcast extension of The Healing Place. This is the podcast where we examine the scriptures line by line, verse by verse, and ask ourselves what is happening here. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are taking a dive into 2 John. If you guys hadn't heard our conversation on 1 John yet, make sure you go to our YouTube channel, check out the playlist. We'll do our best to have a link in the description down below for you guys to go to that playlist so you can take that journey. Because here's the reality. These are connected in a fashion. There's a lot of conversation out there about the fact that 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John quite possibly were delivered about the same time, if not by the same person, to the area churches in Ephesus. Now, that being said, let's talk about the authorship. This opens up with simply the elder. Now, who is the elder? It doesn't say specifically John, but if we go on the assumptions, A, that this was delivered around the same time as 1st John, and as we said in our previous conversation about the book of 1st John, the overwhelmingly the evidence within it tells us that this is in fact John, the disciple that Jesus loved, then we can assume very simply that the elder is John. But who is he writing to? It appears he's writing to a very specific local body there in the Ephesus area. It starts off with saying uh, to uh, the chosen lady and her children. So who is this chosen lady? Is this a woman named Kyria, which is Kyria is the Greek word for lady? Or is this potentially covert speech? Like they're trying to, just in case, because there is a lot of decision taking place, hide the fact that they're talking to a general body that's taking that's there in that area. There's a lot of debate going back and forth between it. Typically, where we land here at the Healing Place and many other people who are who are far more scholarly than I am, we tend to land in the place that this is probably a figurative speech to the, the chosen lady, the elect lady, if you will, uh, that's talking about a local body, a local church, if you will, and those connected to the church. And he's writing to them because there's a very interesting situation. As we said in the previous conversation on 1 John, there's a lot of dissension taking place within the body of Christ in this area. There are those who have come to the point where they are denying that Jesus was the Messiah, that Jesus was divine, some dev- denying the fact that maybe he was even a human being at all. And these false teachers are now getting into the mix, and they're beginning to cause problems. And they're actually attacking actual Christians, those who believe in the fullness of the Gospels and the fullness of the teachings of the Apostles in the Old Testament as a whole. Now, whereas 1 John speaks mostly about our relationship to God, again, it's affirming that conversation about who we are with God and and who God is, this book is a little bit different. This is a very directed letter to a particular group. And if I were to say again, the 1 John was about our relationship with God, This is about a relationship with Antichrist, not the Antichrist. Remember, we talked about this a while back, that Antichrist is a type of individuals that are against Christ, against who Jesus is. Our relationship with those individuals. Uh, Second John is a warning to the specific church that there are people who have denied who Jesus is, and they're looking for validation, not just validation. They're looking for a platform within this very community. And John's right to him saying, do not let them in the door. Do not allow them to do that. Why? What could take place? What is the purpose of not allowing these people to even the opportunity to have the floor in the local body? Over the next couple of weeks, Pastor Scott and I are going to sit down. We're going to be going through the book of 2 John together. And we're going to be discussing this. We're going to be talking about how love is actually very much equated with obedience to the commandments of God. And we're going to talk about the dangers of allowing people like this who are antichristal in their doctrine and their teachings to have a platform in your community and in your life. And I want to encourage you guys to to really lean into this conversation over the next couple of weeks. As we said before, these things that we're seeing in the scriptures, they're not just for that time frame. We see this taking place today. So how did the early church handle these situations? Well, let's discover that together 
And then let's discuss how to apply that to our lives today. Because like I said, we're seeing a lot of these shakings, a lot of these things taking place in the modern era. I also want to encourage you guys in this. If you are enjoying this content, and maybe you're like, hey, we want to use this for our own Bible study with our small groups at our churches, or you know, with our, just our friends. We want to gather some friends together. Let us know. We would love to hear those stories. We'd love to celebrate with you. And if we can answer questions, we'd love to do that. Reach out to us. Mediahub at teachmeachreport.com is the email address you do to get in touch with me and so we can communicate with you. But also, we have a Facebook page. Just look for a midweek move on Facebook. Again, links in the descriptions down below for you guys. So you guys can follow us on Facebook and get updates. We're updating uh, several uh, shorts and reels to YouTube and Facebook right now. And um, to A, get the word out. But they're also just little snippets to highlight some specific things. Some very key points within these conversations. And we want you guys to take part in those things. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, have a great week. <laughs>